Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. It's time for another Deep Sky Challenge. In this one, we're going to be looking at a galaxy in the constellation Leo the Lion. Leo contains many, many galaxies, the most famous ones being the three galaxies that make up the so-called Leo Trio, M65, M66, and NGC 3628. But I covered those galaxies in an earlier episode on great objects to see in a Dobsonian. And I'll put a link to that video if you'd prefer to look for the Leo Trio. But today, we're going to have a closer look at a different galaxy in Leo, NGC 3521. NGC 3521 is what's known as a flocculent spiral galaxy. A flocculent galaxy is one that lacks structure in its spiral arms. Instead, the arms are choppy and disjointed with patches of stars and dust showing up here and there. In a flocculent galaxy like NGC 3521, clusters of stars can appear generally as spiral arms, but there are also star-filled regions appearing as short or discontinuous arms, giving the galaxy that woolly appearance. About 30% of galaxies are flocculent. This galaxy also has an extensive debris shell, or halo, formed by a long-gone satellite galaxy. NGC 3521 was discovered by William Herschel February 22, 1784. It's located about 26 million light-years away, and it's apparent magnitude 9, which means it can be seen with even a small telescope, like this one. Its apparent size in the eyepiece is 11 by 7 arc minutes. The reason I think it's often overlooked, aside from the fact that there are so many galaxies to be seen in Leo and in Virgo, is that it's rather difficult to find this galaxy if searching with a manual mount or star hopping. So the deep sky challenge part will be finding it if you're going to be looking with the manual mount or star hopping. And if you have a larger telescope, the challenge is to see the model core and the halo. To find NGC 3521, go to Leo, the backward question mark or sickle asterism, and then go to the lion's tail to the beta star of Leo, Denebola. And from Denebola, go west to magnitude 3.3, Churton. And from Churton, you're going to drop down to magnitude 3.9, Iota. And by the way, the Leo trio is in between Churton and Iota. But to find NGC 3521, we have to keep moving south from Iota to magnitude 4, Sigma Leonis, which you should still be able to see in a light polluted area. But from here, it gets tricky. NGC 3521 is exactly 7 degrees southwest of Sigma, but there's nothing bright in the vicinity. But if you can see Sigma Leonis and drop exactly 3 degrees south, you'll come to a different galaxy, NGC 3640, which is magnitude 10 elliptical galaxy. And then just 2 degrees southwest of that is a magnitude 5 star, 75 Leonis. And then another 2 degrees southwest is a magnitude 5 star, 69 Leonis, which is directly on the celestial equator, and NGC 3521 is exactly 2 degrees due west of magnitude 5, 69 Leonis. NGC 3521 also makes a long upside-down isosceles triangle with Sigma Leonis and Chi Leonis. Below this is absolute nothingness <laughs> until you come to the faint stars of the constellation Crater, and if you are in Crater, you went too far south. Now let's look at this beautiful flocculent spiral galaxy, first with my 10-inch Dobsonian, and then, hopefully as well, with my little 90-millimeter refractor. We're looking for the mottled oval core with ragged eccentric edges, with the western edge containing a 20 arc second dark lane. In a smaller telescope, it's just going to be a bright spindle with a small oval core but it's quite bright. Hello again. I'm coming to you from my secret spot of Bortle 3 in Northern California. It's very clear. No moon. It's a beautiful evening, except it's quite windy, so I apologize for any wind noise. 
have out my 10 inch Dobsonian and I'm ready to look for NGC 3521. Flocculent, Spiral, Galaxy, and Leo. And it's not quite dark yet, but when it is, I will find it and look at it with this 10 inch Dobsonian. And after that, I'll look at it with my 90 millimeter refractor. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to see it. Okay, be back when it gets dark. Okay, here's Leo. That is the backward question mark or sickle asterism. The brightest star of Leo is Regulus at the bottom of the screen. There's the nebula. There's Churton. From Churton, go to Iota. From Iota, go to Sigma. And from Sigma, go seven degrees southwest. Look for the two magnitude six stars that I told you about. 69 and 76 Leonis. And 3521 will be right there. Oh, wow. Very cool. Very, very cool. Okay, I've got NGC 3521 in my 10-inch Dobsonian. It's very hard to find because there's just nothing in that area of sky and that's why this object is not better known because it's a very cool object. If it were easier to find, a lot more people would be looking at it because, my God, do you hear that barn owl screeching over there? It's scaring me. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it's very distinct. Even at 50 times magnification, you can clearly see it. And then I bumped up the magnification to 120 times. The bright core is very obvious and you can see the elongation and then I increased it to 240 times and you can see the mottled appearance and this is a very cool object. Oh wow. Wow, very cool. Very cool. This is a very cool object. I could see it very clearly, even at 50 times magnification in my 10 inch Dobsonian, and then I increased to 120 times. I could see it even better, the elongation and the bright core. Now I have it at 240 times magnification, and I can see the mottled appearance and the bright core, and it's a very cool object very hard to find if you're looking manually and that's why more people don't know about it but this is a wonderful object i hope you can find it now i'm gonna try to see if i can see it in my 90 millimeter refractor oh my god there are two barn owls over there i think they're eating a squirrel did you hear that it scared me to death when i first heard it but it's just owls they're not gonna bother me but what a racket over there. I don't know why I attract so many animals. Okay, I can see NGC 3521 with this 90 millimeter refractor. Um, this is a very low magnification, 27 times. <laughs> it's a tiny little dust ball. I can just barely make out that it's elongated and it's obviously a galaxy. So yes, you can see it in a 90 millimeter refractor. I'm in a Bortle 3, so I don't know that you could see it with such a tiny instrument in a light polluted area because galaxies are hard. But now I'm going to increase the magnification. I have a three and a half millimeter, which is perfect for a little refractor like this. I think the focal length is 540. So let's see what I can see with this eyepiece. And it's hard to find but it's well worth the effort because once you find it, it is really neat to look at. Oh yeah beautiful nice I mean 
there you can make out the bright core it has a very bright core and I can make out the that it's elongated but I I wouldn't be able to tell you it's a flocculent <laughs> spiral but it's still a very neat object very cool and I can see it with a 90 millimeter refractor from a Bordeaux 3 Actually, at this magnification, even with this 90 millimeter refractor, I can make out quite a bit of detail. This is a wonderful object. And about my observing site, Zasteria says it's a Bortel 3, but I, I don't think so. I took an SQM and it was 20.77. It wasn't even 21. That's lame. That's Bortel 4. Maybe if you hiked. <laughs> way into that wilderness area it's a Bortle 3 or 2 but here I maybe Bortle 3 slash 4 so get your telescopes out and go for this object it's wonderful it's bright and it has a lot of detail and it's just a beautiful object I highly recommend it I really like looking at this object it's a very cool object it has a very bright core and it was beautiful and I could see a lot of detail. It's hard to find because there is just not much in that area of the sky. <laughs> but the good news is that if you can find those two magnitude six stars, there's not much else around there. So it's pretty easy to find it once you get to there. So I hope you could find it too. It's a beautiful object. Well, I hope you were able to locate this beautiful flocculent spiral galaxy and study it for a while in whatever telescope you have. If you can find it, this is a great target for any size telescope. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see y'all soon. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.